Can Corsair improve on previous keyboard offerings with the new K70 Max, a premium keyboard that sits quite close to the top of their range? Hi guys, welcome to Kit Guru and to my full review of the brand new K70 Max from Corsair. It's a full-sized, as you can see, premium keyboard with a dedicated media wheel, dedicated media buttons. It comes with this memory foam wrist rest that you can see sitting just in front of it. It's wired only and it poles at 8,000 hertz with Corsair's Axon Hyperpoling, but it costs 220 quid. It obviously contains a lot more features than the ones I quickly mentioned then. So let's dive in, look at it in greater detail, and I'll tell you what I think of it. Let's kick things off with the design of the K70 Max then. It's finished in this kind of gunmetally slash dark gray color. The top case is aluminum, and it's got an etched triangular pattern across the top sort of section of the front, the top of the keyboard. It's the same sort of pattern we've seen on some other Corsair products in the past. And then the bottom, in contrast to that aluminium metal top is plastic and it's kind of semi-transparent like a smoky sort of finish. There's a screen on the top that lights up with different LED indicators to show you the different lock statuses and then it also contains an RGB Corsair logo. The overall design of the chassis is kind of angular and it's got a lot of sharp lines and sharp edges and it kind of looks kind of futuristic reminds me of the um, k100 air wireless that i reviewed on the channel a while ago it's kind of thin angles sharp designs kind of like a cyber truck but in keyboard form it is a fully rgb backlit keyboard and as is the case with most corsair products it's individually addressable so you can change each of the keys to your heart's content I mentioned quickly in the intro, it does have dedicated media control keys and a volume scroll wheel, which can be reassigned to do other things like scrolling up and down. A mouse action can be assigned to it to scroll up and down, for example. There's buttons in the top left corner for changing profile, changing lighting mode, and then locking the Windows key so you don't accidentally hit it while you're gaming. It comes with the memory foam wrist rest, as I mentioned, which attaches to the bottom edge of the keyboard via two magnets. And it does hold on, it sticks on there quite well. It doesn't come off easily. I've never had it detach when I didn't want it to. There's also a switch on the top, which I wondered what it was when I first started checking this keyboard out. It's an, actually a tournament mode switch, which you can flick it and it will change the lighting from whatever you've got assigned in the IQ software, which we'll look at later, but it'll change that lighting to a static color, which you can also change the color that it changes to in tournament mode within IQ to stop you getting distracted. And then it also disables any assigned macros that you've set up on the keyboard. So you can really focus in on the gaming, obviously tournament mode, if you're into that sort of thing, then you're not gonna accidentally hit a button, do something you don't want to do and mess up a play. It has got adjustable height. There's two different typing angles. The feet can be found on the bottom and they're, they're nothing special. They're just standard keyboard feet, as is mostly the case with most keyboards that I look at. There are huge rubber pads on the bottom to stop it moving on your desk, but for the size of them, they don't, work that well. The keyboard does move around a bit. I've stopped using a massive desk pad on my desk recently and moved to a smaller mouse pad. And when it's on the wood of my desk, it does slide around very slightly. And then as I mentioned, it's a wired only keyboard and it connects via a braided 1.8 meter USB-C cable. Let's move on to talk about the build quality then. And Overall, it's okay. It's nothing to write home about. There isn't much flex. Everything feels quite solid. There isn't much flex due to the top being aluminium, like I mentioned, but then in contrast, the bottom is that plastic, so it's not completely rigid. And that's one area of the overall materials that we use that I was really disappointed. For 220 quid, it should be full aluminium all around. That's something I'd like to have seen on a premium keyboard. The buttons across the keyboard feel okay. The, the lock and the mute buttons have a tactile click and you can hear them when you press them down, but then the media buttons are much chunkier and they feel much spongier to press. The supplied 1.8 meter USB-C cable 
is good quality, but like most cables that are kind of on the thicker side, it does kink up quite a bit and it's hard to get it to lie completely flat on your desk. And then another thing related to the cable that I have to mention is the port where you connect it to the keyboard. It does wobble around quite a lot and it could have had much tighter tolerances for where the cable actually inserts into the body of the keyboard. I'd like to have seen that feel a bit better quality because as it is, it wobbles a bit too much for my liking. The switches then, and the switches in this keyboard are kind of its main selling point. They're Corsair's MGX magnetic switches and they're found in every single key apart from the media keys and stuff that I mentioned a second ago. They've all got individually adjustable actuation, which ranges from 0.4 mil up to 3.6 mil. And you can change that in IQ, which I'll talk about in a little bit. You can add multiple actuation points to enable you to add multiple actions to a single keystroke, which I've played around with it and it does work, but it's not something I've ever been able to integrate into my gaming or into my productivity and my workflow. It's just, you've got to have an insane level of control to be able to press a key down 3 point whatever millimeters, 3.6 millimeters, and know when one action and another action is gonna happen. That's just a level of control that I'm never gonna have. The stabilizers though, this is where I just, it's frustrating to talk about. The stabilizers are bone dry. And this is something that's got to change on Corsair's keyboards, in my opinion. This keyboard is 220 quid. Can you not throw in a bit of lube for that? I mean, is it a time thing? It isn't a cost thing because lube doesn't cost that much. But is it a production thing? The production line, the production process for this keyboard does not, does it not allow the addition of lube to the stabilizers and then a bit of testing just to dampen them a little bit? Because as they are, they're not great. The keycaps are all double shot PBT and they have a standard bottom row so you can change them out quite easily if you want to. Uh, they've got decent sized legends that are nice and clear to read and I've got no issue with the keycaps at all, they feel good quality. Here's a sound test so you can hear what the K70 Max keyboard sounds like and I'm going to throw in a bit of a comparison just to, to spice things up a little bit. So coming out of that sound test, for 220 quid, the stab rattle and just general sound of the board is just terrible. It's very, very poor. And this has been a theme on Corsair's boards for, for a while now. And it's kind of, I just don't get why they can't improve that one area. Surely other people have picked up on this. I mean, it, they, it just doesn't sound good. The board pings quite a noticeable amount as well, especially on this review model that I've got here on the H key. I've, when I first got it out of the box and first I tested it, I pressed that H key and ting, you can just hear it. I don't know whether the, my microphone's going to pick it up for the review, but there is noticeable ping on the keyboard. And in that sound test, I compared it to the M key by Montec, which is a keyboard that I reviewed recently on the channel. Full size, similar size and kind of build to this. And it's 
half the price off the top of my head. I think it's about 100 quid, it's about half the price. And I just wanted to show you the difference in sound and that it d doesn't cost the earth to send out a space bar and a keyboard that doesn't sound like chucking a spanner into a bucket. It's half the price and the, the space bar sounds twice as good. Moving on to talk about RGB then. So this keyboard is fully backlit. As I mentioned earlier, it's fully customizable. It's got per key lighting, so you can change it to your heart's content. IQ is really good at controlling that. You have a layered system, kind of like Photoshop, if you ever use that. You can add different layers and add different effects to different layers, and they all interact with each other. It's quite a cool system, and Corsair are probably one of the leading companies in kind of RGB control. There's plenty of modes within IQ, and th there's bound to be something in there that you're going to like. As for the K70 Max in particular though, it's got north facing LEDs which kind of leads to patchy lighting on some of the keys with longer or larger legends, especially towards the lower side, the bottom edge of the keycap itself. Like the secondary legends on the numpad just hardly light up at all. You can't really tell that they're backlit. You can, you can very slightly, I might be going overboard a little bit of my criticism of that, but it just doesn't look good. Overall, the RGB on this for a 220 quid keyboard is quite disappointing. And talking about my usage then while I've been testing this out, I've used it for gaming, I've used it for typing, for work, for chilling, just generally how I would normally use a keyboard. And gaming has been okay. It hasn't blown me away. It's got the job done. It polls at 8,000 hertz, so it's always been quite responsive. The RGB, as I mentioned now, is okay. It doesn't get distracting. I don't, sometimes when I'm using a keyboard with really bright RGB, when I'm looking at my monitor, I'll notice it out of the, the bottom of my vision and it'll distract me a little bit. As for typing, I'm not really a fan of typing on this keyboard. It feels hollow and the keycaps move around under your fingers when you're not pressing them. They kind of wobble a little bit on the stems of the switches. As for the actuation as well, my personal preference is the default of two millimeters. And I find, found that anything lower than that leads to accidental key presses, but anything higher than that doesn't feel quick enough for my taste. That's just a personal preference thing though, and everyone's gonna be different. The wrist rest was a saving grace. The wrist rest is really nice. It's really soft, really squishy. It's really comfortable and I really like it. And the software, talking about the software quickly for the K70 Max then, is IQ. I've mentioned it in plenty of videos now. I, I liked IQ and I've liked it for the longest time. It's kind of my favourite peripheral software and it's recently gotten better and it's now moved over to using a plug-in based system where it'll only install what you need it to install when you connect a Corsair device or you go and download a plugin for controlling lights on your motherboard or stuff like that. The K70 Max specifically has tabs for key assignment, lighting, performance, which is just what the Windows lock key does, and then what color the indicators are. Then there's a tab for key actuations, which is where you're gonna adjust the magnetic switches. And then finally, there's device settings for changing the polling rate, the layout, and then a few of the things that you're probably just gonna set and forget. You'll only ever go in there once. It Generally, it's good software, as I said, I like it, but it can, can sometimes have a bit of a paddy when you're trying to update firmware and it'll fail to download stuff and you have to reconnect stuff and retry a few times, but eventually you'll be able to get it to work. And as I mentioned earlier, quickly talking about the actuation before I move on to my final thoughts, you can assign multiple actions to each key via different actuation steps with the magnetic switches. And this is easily configured within that key actuation tab within IQ. So coming to my closing thoughts then, Matt's final thoughts, I feel this keyboard is probably overpriced by about 70 quid. If you'd asked me to guess before I knew the price, I'd have probably said about 150 quid that it was gonna cost. Um, the magnetic switches are clever and the customization is great. It really lets people dial in the settings that they like. The stabilizers, so I can't, I'm gonna be playing now. The stabilizers are simply put, not good enough for a keyboard of this price. Just please fix them Corsair, please, Get some quality control done on your stabilizers, lube them up, get them feeling nice, and just, just sort them out because they've always been kind of disappointing. I really like the brand and I really like the products. I like the way it looks and stuff, but the stabilizers just ruin the whole experience and the sound of it. Uh, the build quality on first impression is good, but there are small areas that could be improved upon that become apparent after you've used it for a little bit, like the USB port wobbling, the cable wobbling in the port, for example. 
The RGB on this model in particular it might not be the same on all of them, so don't get me wrong. The RGB is poor. The effects are cool, as is always the case with Corsair, and the ecosystem that Corsair have created mean that Corsair products work really well together, but the uniformity is not great, and the dim spots are noticeable in a darker environment. I just feel generally, now I'm talking generally not about this keyboard in specific, I feel that Corsair need to shift a bit of focus from adding stuff like magnetic switches, although they do work well, and really get their stabilizer, sound dampening, and typing feel, just get it dialed in, keep it simple, get the basics absolutely nailed, and then we'd have a really, really nice keyboard on our hands. But I do feel that the K70 Max doesn't deliver on the core keyboard typing experience enough for me to recommend it, especially costing 220 quid. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a like down below if you did. I'd really appreciate it. Um, you'll find links to our website, our Patreon page, our Discord server, all in the video's description down below. And then just below the video, but above the description, you'll find links to some merch and stuff if you want to pick anything up. And this has been the K70 Max, a new premium keyboard from Corsair. I've been Matt. Look after yourselves. Speak to you later.